cool, blimey, mate. I'm upside down. Ooh. That's better. <laughs> G'day, mate, and welcome to a very Australian version of the Geordie Wine Guide from Newcastle, Australia. Our mates at Rode Microphones have kindly supplied the mics for the Geordie Wine Guide. So this is a shout out to them. We're doing an Australian wine episode in honor of them because they're located just outside Sydney. So when I go down the supermarket in the UK, there's loads of Australian Shiraz. That's what we usually see in our supermarkets, but there's a whole lot of other ones as well. So I'm gonna talk a bit about the different regions of Australia and all the interesting wines that come from them. So you go along the west, you've got the really hot deserty wines, you've got cooler wines where the wind comes in from the sea and it's a bit wetter and it's cooler and you can grow stuff like Cabernet and Chardonnay and then you go over to New South Wales near Sydney and you can grow really hot, big Shiraz, juicy, full and then you go down to uh, Mornington Peninsula where this is from. Um, this is another cool climate bit, that bit where it comes out at the bottom, it's very southern, cool stuff. Pinot Noir grows there, Chardonnay. And then you've got this amazing bit, the bit that goes like that, southern, which just has everything for me, that's, that's the place. You've got Eden Valley, where this is from, which is a bit higher up. You've got Barossa, which is where all the big Shiraz comes from. Kunawara is basically like Bordeaux style climate. So they're growing Cabernet, they're blending stuff, that's a really interesting one. You've got McLaren Vale in there, they're growing loads of different types of red wines. Clare Valley, best Rieslings in Australia, well that's what I think. Um, some of them taste like petrol and kerosene, and some of them even smell like blow-up beds, which sounds like a ridiculous thing in a wine, but it's, when you try it, you're like, bloody hell, blow-up beds. And then we come to Eden Valley, where this is from and I'll be reviewing this on the next episode. And Eden Valley is where it all began. Penfolds is there, that's the biggest, most famous um, fine wine place in, in Australia. And some of their stuff can go for thousands of quid. Barossa Valley is where the oldest vines are. So when this little pest called Phylloxera wiped out all the grapes of the world, some of them survived in Barossa. I don't know why, it must be because it's like isolated or something. So. Barossa has some of the oldest vines you'll come across in the world of wine. Oh, the Barbies, man. Oh, yeah. Apparently, Australian people love Barbies. The big, huge, smoky, juicy, um, big oaky Shiraz, although on its own it might seem a bit over the top, with a nice burger or some grilled chicken or like a Nando's or something, that's going to be class. So if you're choosing wines from Australia, um, you got to try the different regions. So this one is down the bottom, Mornington Peninsula, it's Chardonnay. It's cool climate, it's high acidity. It's got nice lemony, citrusy, melon type aromas. But other places, like I've had some from Western Australia that have been a bit more ripe, tropical fruits, stuff like that. And there's also near Sydney, they, they're growing Semillon, which is a totally different grape altogether. So that's going to be more like a dessert wine but they do different styles there and they, they let the grapes rot and they, they do loads of cool stuff. So there's different styles of white wine. Shiraz comes in so many different um, styles in Australia that if you have a Shiraz from Australia and think, oh, I'm not really keen on that, it's too, too big, too juicy or whatever, then there's always gonna be a different style because it's so varied in climate. So I'm not a big fan of the big juicy bold wines with so much oak. So I tend to go for stuff from like Eden Valley, which is um, a bit cooler. I've heard that Australians are like some of the biggest consumers of wine in the world. That, I think that might just be because they're proper pissheads. Is that why when, jo when Australians come to Newcastle, they're always like, "Fucking great Newcastle, mate. And they always know about Newcastle, even though they've never been. So if you're in your supermarket and you see one of them bottles that's got the yellow label, and you think, oh, that's the extent of Australian wine, then look further because there's a lot more wine than that. So if you're gonna remember anything about Australian wines from this video, it's that there's loads of Shiraz, but it's not all big juicy barbecue wines. You can have serious wines as well. They've got a bit less fruit. They've got a bit more interesting uh, organic flavors, a bit like the, the wines of France. You've got blends, you've got Rieslings that are dry, smell like blow up beds, remember that? There's Semillon. There's Pinot Noir down the south. There's loads of stuff. So just keep trying them. 
have an open mind and get the Barbie on. Join us next time when I'll be reviewing the Torsi Matthews Frost Dodger Shiraz. That's a bit of a mouthful. Um, this wine is from the Eden Valley and it's going to be mint. So you've got to go to YouTube and you've got to press subscribe and then you have to go to Facebook and then follow on there or like it. And then you have to go to Twitter and then do some tweeting. And then um, there's Instagram as well. And I think that's about it. So you do all them things and then you'll make us happy. Cheers.